We have seen how the shear strain varies across a shear zone if there is a Poissouli flow, if there is a Kuwait flow, if there is a combined Poissouli and Kuwait flow. What will happen if we instead of looking at the velocity profile, we look at the displacement profile because the displacement profile gives us with time how things are changing. So with time how some particular point is varying in strain will be possible to find out through the displacement profile. So I take the easy example first, say this is a Poissouli flow happening from left towards right for a Newtonian viscous fluid passing through rigid boundaries infinitely long and a single fluid we have considered there is no temperature variation inside no heterogeneity in the material. Now suppose I have drawn as a displacement profile. Now, in the second instant I can draw at some other instant this is the displacement profile. So I can write this as d1 at some time t1 and this one at a d2 displacement profile at some time t2. Now suppose I want to find out how this point equidistant from the two boundaries is undergoing progressive change in shear strain. Now I know that this point has come over here from my previous lecture you can work out you can draw a tiny tangent you see that the tiny tangent is parallel to the tiny tangent drawn over there so the initial position of the point. So since these tangents have not rotated therefore the shear strain there is 0 and at the instant t2 for this vertex over here I draw a tiny tangent and I find that the tangent has not rotated. So what I understand is that point A and if I draw in this way the time and here if I plot the shear strain say psi angular shear rotation and here the time t then the shear strain for point A we are talking at initially before deformation it has a zero shear strain. Now as time keeps on passing the shear strain does not alter. So therefore this becomes the locus of this point. So at t1 time this can be t1 time and this can be t2 time. So the shear strain does not change and only time keeps on passing. Now we can take some other points and see how it varies with time. Let us say I take this point B and since it is a linear motion I can understand where the point B has gone, B has gone to this point B dash. I can draw a tiny tangent at B dash and I can draw a tiny tangent over here which is the line itself y axis itself. Now b dash point goes to b double dash at t2 time given by the displacement profile d2 and I can draw a tangent here. These diagrams are not very accurate so basically they certainly are not parallel to each other. So this and that now it is okay. So now if I draw time and if I take the shear strain for point B is journey from B to B dash and B double dash how it will be looking like with respect to this small yellow line this red tangent if I extend them this is an angle and if I extend it this line this is another angle. So this line has undergone 
a rotation and further rotation. Now we can see this angle theta 2 and this angle theta 1. T1 is the first time instant, T2 is the later time instant, D1 and D2 are the profiles, B dash and B double dash are the points whose initial position was B on the inactive marker. Theta 1 and theta 2 are indicating the rotation. Theta 1 is indicating how much this tiny tangent has rotated at time T1 given by the displacement profile D1 and theta 2 is the angle given by how much is the rotation that has happened with, with, between these two lines, this tiny tangent over and this tangent over here. So what has happened? This as you see, you can see my hand how things are moving. This is the orientation and it has gone like this. So the angle is initially small and then this angle is getting steeper. That means theta 2 more than theta 1 is happening. So from here theta 2 more than theta 1 you can also write if I want tan theta 2 is more than tan theta 1 or instead of theta if I write psi then I can plot in this diagram. So what has happened at the time instant t1 there was some amount of psi. So this is the plot and the time instant t2 this magnitude has increased. So we can understand that for point b with time as per the displacement profile for a Poissouli flow is undergoing more and more strain. This was the plot for psi versus time it can also be same for tan psi versus time there will be an increasing pattern will be found and it is possible to draw the increasing pattern also from the displacement profile. The displacement profile I already wrote down it will look like this uz is equal to 1 by 2 mu del p del x y square minus y0 square. You may or may not use a minus sign over there and then at different times uz time t if I multiply the entire thing by t I will get the displacement profile. Now choose any point say for y equal to one third y0. So I have chosen some point b point there. Now it is possible to for this coordinate what is the equation of the tangent, how much is the angle it makes with the y axis all can be worked out and then these plots can be made. From the progressive plot a pattern can be drawn how with time the point b is behaving. And from geometric principle we can say if this is the distance a b and the strain profile goes like that if I take a point down here as b1 such that a b1 equal to a b then the b 1s strain journey will be the same. Why I am saying this diagram looks clumsy so let me redraw what I meant here. Say so this is a point b and this is my 0 0 point and I call this 0 0 point as a point a b distance and I take same distance here and I plot here let us say b 1 then you can see that this parabola is symmetric with respect to this line. Therefore the strain journey of the strain evolution of the point b at different displacement profiles will be same as that for the b 1 point but there is one difference whereas point B I mean to say any point above this uzd line any point above the uzd line is moving in this direction for a flow from left towards right the points which are plotted here will be moving in opposite direction. Here the tangents are moving in this direction in the bottom part the tangents will be moving in opposite direction. What is the movement direction of the tangents here? It is anti clockwise and here what is the movement direction of the tangents here? Look at my hand, it is clockwise. So, therefore, 
if I take this theta 1, theta 2, etc. as positive, I have to, psi 1, psi 2 as positive, here I have to take them as negative. Or if I take those rotations as negative, then I have to take the numbers here as positive. Clockwise rotation and counterclockwise rotation has to be taken of different signs. But if I remove the, forget the signs, take only the magnitude, the B1 point's journey in terms of strain will be same as what I have shown earlier. So this was for the point B. Now if I take another point here, C, I can also find out how the shear strain keeps varying for point C. Obviously for point C also the strain will keep on rising and rising. There is only one point in this parabolic profile where no strain is happening, rotational strain and even in displacement profile over time for geology millions of years no rotational strain will be working and that is the vertex of the parabola. All other points will be straining, will be rotating and some rotational strain will be produced. So from A to B, A to C we are thinking how the points journey will give the shear strain. We can have a general approach for finding out. What is the general approach? I can take say A is my center 0, 0 and I take any point Q with a coordinate 0 and then Y0 by M. Now by changing the M, M equal to 1 means this point okay? and taking M as different numbers, I can find out all different points within A to Q. It is possible to do between A to this upper boundary and it is possible. So keeping this principle in mind, we can find out the angle psi 1, psi 2 or theta 1, theta 2, etc. Then in the final expression, keep on changing the m values progressively and keep on plotting. So all these different points will have different kinds of curves I am expecting. But one thing is common that across half of this channel here in this region, all points will undergo one kind of rotation, sense of shearing and in the bottom it is another pattern. And now if I look into the velocity profile, what more I can say? I have told it earlier, I can repeat at this point the shear strain is 0, at this point the shear strain is highest, at this point the shear strain is intermediate. So from higher shear strain to lower shear strain is this point. So this point's journey will be very high shear strain and keeps on increasing. This point's journey will be less shear strain that point and its further journey and so on and so forth for all these points. So this was for the Poissoli flow. What happens in case of a coet flow? I have considered the bottom boundary static and the top boundary is moving. This is a displacement profile and then another displacement uh, profile is drawn at some, some time t2. This one is the displacement profile d1 for time t1 and this is the displacement profile d2 for time t2. How progressively the different points on this line are straining we want to find out. This point was here and now it has gone over there. I have drawn a tiny tangent and I can see the angle. For all these points I can find that equal amount of rotation has happened. So the psi is fixed, it is not psi 1, psi 2, it is all fixed amount of rotation has happened. So if I take this point as let us say n, how the point n's journey will be there, time and here is a shear strain. We can clearly see that progressively the this angle initial position and the final position of the line is increasing. So if that is the case then we will get also with time increasing shear strain for the point n. Not only for point n but for all the points same thing will happen. So this was from the displacement profile how progressively with changing time the shear strain will vary. In the geological case we get the final product 
we may not be able to find out shear strength versus time curve. This may be possible to do in the laboratory in the ideal situation by deforming the rock or the rock analog in a control situation. So, I have talked about the coet flow, I have talked about the Poissoli flow. Now, one can apply common sense and one can think how to deal with the uh, this kind of coet Poissoli flow acting together against gravity. Say this is the profile that is the flow and I have drawn let us say the displacement profile. Then how this point the vertex its shear strain is varying with time at vertex if I draw a tangent it will be parallel to the line. So, therefore, it does not have any shear strain it will maintain 0 shear strain with progressive time. At this point how much is the shear strain at this point how much etc. following the same process the same principle can be worked out. Now, let us look at how to understand how to decipher quickly qualitatively without getting into equation what kind of velocity profiles will be produced if certain boundaries are moving certain boundaries are not moving etc. And with this you will be able to quickly draw and then visualize things and not every time you have to go back to the equation. Say the bottom boundary is static and the top boundary is moving I can draw the velocity profile like this no problem. If I say that there is a fluid flow from left to the right hand side direction in addition to it. So, if there is only a fluid flow we will think of a parabolic pattern. Now, what will be their combination if both shearing is happening and this fluid is moving? I have to draw a parabola passing through these two points and the vertex will be in the upper half of the channel. So, the parabola will look like this. So, this is how I have constructed and I have remembered. Now, a little bit change situation say the bottom boundary is static top boundary moves in this way how the profile will look like velocity profile looks like this. Imagine there is a fluid flow from left towards the right hand side direction. If that is happening then what would be the velocity profile only because of this flow is given by this parabolic profile. Now, the point is what will be the combination if both this flow is happening and this shear is happening how to construct So, the parabola has to pass through this point and it has to pass through this point. So, it will look like this. So, it is constructed I will draw several of them so that I hope no ambiguity remains how to quickly visualize the velocity profiles. Now, I take this situation like this this boundary moves in this direction, but the bottom boundary is not static that moves in this direction. Now, how the coet flow profile will look like? this will be the appearance. Now, imagine there is a fluid flow from left towards the right hand side direction. So, if that is happening this would be the profile. If both the coet flow and Poissoli flow are happening then what will be the profile? The parabola resultant parabola must pass through these two points. So, it will look like this. So, you can see when one boundary was static this is the curve when both the boundaries are moving this would be the parabolic profile. Likewise, one can keep on thinking basically and let us do few more of them. Say now the fluid flows in this direction and these things I am going to repeat. The bottom boundary is static and the top boundary moves in this way. Let us take them one by one. If only this coet flow is happening this will be the profile and if this flow is happening this is going to be the profile. What is the combination of these two profiles? The combination will be given by a parabola which must pass through this point and that point and it will be given by this kind of profile. 
Now let us take this example. So, here all the flow is happening from right towards left. In this diagram, all the flow happened, Poissoli component happens from left towards right. This way flow is happening and the shear sense of the boundary is like that and the bottom boundary is rigid. Now I can draw the profile for the coet flow only. If there is only Poissoli flow, this would be the profile. Now if both are happening, the parabolic profile must pass through these two points. So it will look like this. Now let us let us take this one and the flow happens in this direction the Poissoli component. So, because of the Poissoli component this is the profile. Imagine the boundaries are sheared in this way. Because of that shearing this is expected to be the only the coet flow profile. What will be the combination of the coet flow and Poissoli flow in this case the resultant parabola has to pass through these two points. So, it will look like this. So, here we have seen one parabolic profile and one straight line profile being added up. What is the combination? What is the resultant flow I have shown? Now, we can think there are two parabolic profiles and one straight line profile and how their combinations will work. I can do it here. Imagine there is a fluid flow from bottom towards top. I am pushing the fluid only because of this push. This is the profile, but the fluid also has a tendency to go downward direction. Because of that the dg sin theta component goes like this parabolic profile. Then you have added a shear also, what will be the resultant profile? So, first from the two parabolic profiles, I have to find out the resultant parabolic profiles and I have already discussed the resultant will be like this. And if there were only coet shear and the boundaries were horizontal, this would have been the velocity profile. So, the combination between the white straight line and the white parabola will be the resultant grand resultant. So, the grand resultant will look like this from the principle which I discussed here. So, in this way I can give you some exercise basically to think that if this is the shear sense okay, and these are the different flow this is the tendency of the fluid to flow down and I have put another velocity profile here tendency of the fluid to move up. What would be the resultant velocity profile? Can you draw that? If you can draw then you can understand in the field in the prototype what would be the shear sense. We are trying to keep in mind the fluid mechanics visually quickly in the field we can compare and what we can expect in the field in, in terms of these structures.